What's up, no borrower left behind community? This is the place of mortgage coach sales boomerang, and we are dedicated to turning every loan officer in America into a data driven mortgage advisor badass. Uh, today we have Mr. Dan Keller. Who, Dan, how many cold calls have you made over the past six months to real estate? We're talking real estate agents, everyone. Yeah. How many cold calls? It's, it's north of 300. So north of 300 cold calls to different agents. How, how many realtor relationships do you already have like in that market? People that know you, like you, it would not be qualified as a cold call. Oh man, that's hard. It's hard with social media because a lot of these calls when I'm making them are like, oh, hey, I've heard of you or hey, we did a deal together and we didn't. You know, it's, it's like- How many people referred to your business last year? Last year in 2022, my board, I can't turn my computer, but I have a board on my wall. So five times two. I have 32 realtors that sent me at least one referral last year, and I had seven that sent me more than four. Okay. So by the way, he knows his numbers. Data-driven mortgage advisors, they know their own numbers. That's that's due east on the, the data-driven mortgage advisor uh, um, compass, due east. He knows his numbers. Uh, do you Do you think it's safe to say that there's a hundred realtors that know you, like you, and trust you in the market that you serve. Not yet, but there will be. Yeah, I mean, there's a hundred that know me uh, or know of me, maybe like me. But trust is trust is something that we're going to talk about today. It's that's sitting down and breaking bread and and learning more about each other's businesses and stuff like that. So two out of the three, yeah. Okay, so he's he's got thirty three that actually gave him business, uh, seven that gave him more than four deals. Uh, and he made 300 cold calls and he's going to bring some value. He is, he is a mortgage coach. So something I'm going to talk a lot throughout this entire year is, is being this data driven mortgage advisor. I want to show this to you because, because I want this to be a teaching and a training to y'all, uh, being a mortgage coach, making sure that you're, you're, you're delivering advice to the consumer with data, um, knowing the data in your market, educating data in your market. Uh, turning your own database into a data bank. And then he already showed how he, he knows the numbers. And I know Dan, he wins by noon. So so Dan, how do, you, how do you want to frame the call? Because I wanted you to be my guest today. And I said, hey, what do you think are the hottest and most important topics in the market? And, and you picked this. So why did you pick this topic and where do you want to go? So I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm not tired of... Uh the lack of tactical information out there from coaches, but it's getting old seeing the inspiration, the motivation, the, I did this 20 years ago. I did this 10 years ago. And, and loan officers are struggling right now, Dave. They're struggling with one main thing, and that's a lack of leads in their pipeline. And where do we go out right now when our database has 3% 30 year and fixed rates? Time, time out. Time out. I want, I want some audio engagement guys. First of all, if you're watching this live, whether you're watching this in our Facebook group or you're watching this on, on um, Zoom, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So first of all, did Dan hit it, right? Are, are, you, are you struggling? Like, is that your number one pain point? By the way, if that's not your number one pain point, tell us what is your number one pain point and we'll cover that. So, so by the way, for those of you that are using the little emojis, uh, give me a thumbs up. If if Dan nailed that, and and we like hearts too, so feel free to use those little reactions anytime. So Dan, we got a lot of thumbs up in yep. the Zoom audience. I'll check out the Facebook audience in a minute. Anyways, keep it going. You nailed it, bro. Yeah. And Dave, I think that's what makes me relevant is because I'm in the trenches with the same pains as everyone else right now. We all want more leads. Um, we all want more realtor leads. Um, and here's the thing: like two years ago, I loved some of your guests because they had really great teams. Um, I've learned a lot from, for, for example, Jeremy Forsey on how he's built his team and regents and everything. And so I think there's a season for certain coaching and certain advice. So, hey, when volume was crazy and we needed to scale or we were looking to scale, team building was a hot topic. Right now, it's lead generating. And, and I, when I say right now, I'm talking about, I got woken up about eight to 10 months ago I was always pretty good. I always, I, I'm involved in the core training. So I call my realtors on Monday and I chase new realtor accounts. 
But there's got to be a better model. And I think the model in that particular coaching program where you're just shotgun approach and you're calling a bunch of realtors and you're saying the same thing. And the same thing is, and what they teach is, I'm going to call you until you set up a meeting with me. I'm going to call you until I burn you out. And I don't know if that would work for me. If an insurance agent or someone that wanted my business kept calling me every Friday, I'd get to the point where I would just delete them. I would just get to the point where I'm like, oh God, it's Joe calling me again. And so... And I experienced that. And I'm out in the marketplace and I'm seeing these people, these realtors. And here's the other thing. I don't have six months, Dave, to incubate a relationship. I need new referrals, new relationships now. And so I went out about eight to 10 months ago outside of our business on a hunt to hunt down people that could sell, uh, people that had sales systems. And I bought a few of them and they sucked. And they were just, nope, this isn't going to work in mortgage. And then I got connected to a client of mine who's an executive recruiter like at the, in the tech space. I mean, he gets paid a lot of money to land big accounts in the tech space and got to listen to a couple of things that he was saying relative to conversations and cold calls and LinkedIn messages. And I'm like, wow, I can't, I, and really he had a background in kind of like we've had Renee Rodriguez teach us some things, really understanding how our brain interprets and functions relative to words. And uh, I'm like, holy crud, this is great. So I started learning more about that process and they just kind of made it my own. And when you understand there's a formula for making sales calls or cold calls, when you understand there's a mindset around that, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, the mindset first, because if you don't have the right mindset as to why you're making those calls, it, they're just, it's just going to be another call on a sheet and you're going to try to just check it off and you're not going to add value and you're not going to move further in that direction to getting that sit down, that break bread and learning more about that client and then ultimately adding value to that relationship and growing a relationship. So I wanted to use this analogy because you can see behind me, you guys, I'm a big baseball guy. I spent a lot of time coaching at the college, semi-pro level. And what I'm going to show you guys and teach you guys today is how to hit a 96 mile an hour fastball. Okay. I did it. I did it at a high level and I could hit a 96 mile an hour fastball. No problem. Most people can't hit more than 91, 92. And here's why. They just haven't practiced that four mile an hour increase in velocity. Okay. Now, I'm not going to try to teach you today how to hit a hundred mile an hour fastball. We don't need to hit hundred mile an hour fastballs. We need to hit the average fastball at the pro level. We're all pros. So we need to make sure that we can hit a 96 mile an hour fastball. So that's what we're going to focus on today is how do you how do you hit that fastball? How do you make that sales call? And the reason why I'm qualified to teach you is because I'm hitting the fastball. I hit the 96 mile an hour fastball. I'm hitting it today in business. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing that and what it takes to make those calls. Let's go. Cool. So we talked about this the other day, Dave, about mindset. So I believe, and I'll ask you this, every mortgage loan officer listening to this, give me a thumbs up if you agree with me. Do you believe that you, when you call a realtor or when you work with a realtor, have value to bring to them? Do you have a particular loan program that could help them close more loans? Is your team function, your bank, your process, something that would add value to their business? You as Hey, I'm not, nobody's going to outwork me. I will take your phone call whenever. I will do whatever it takes to protect your commission, to get you paid and ensure you get referrals. Give me thumbs up, hands up, whatever, if you believe that. Because if you believe that, then that's your mindset going into these calls, that you are of value. We're not fooling anyone. We're, there's nobody out there going, it's not a scam. What we are doing, we are selling true value. We are all mortgage coach subscribers. The technology that we use in mortgage coach helps borrowers make better financial decisions. My realtors love, they're the ones that introduce me going, Hey, and you got to work with Dan because he uses this technology that makes getting a mortgage super clear. Okay. So that's a value proposition right there. So if you feel like you have value to realtors and to home buyers, Raise your hand and understand that that's the first key component to understanding mindset around making cold calls. The other thing is, it doesn't matter how you feel. Write this down. This is the best quote. This is the best mindset hack that you need to know. It doesn't matter how you feel every single day when you wake up, 
when you walk into the office, when you pick up the phone, when you look at your list of, of names to call, it doesn't matter how you feel. It's what you do despite how you feel that will be your advantage in the market. I do not love picking up this list, this spreadsheet, and calling these names. I don't love it. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Love is an emotion. It doesn't matter how I feel. I don't love being broke. I don't love my pipeline right now. So if you really want to throw in emotions, flip it on yourself. Okay. Which pain are you going to pick? Okay. So the emotional side of things, it's not a matter of how you feel. It's not a matter of how we're feeling that day or how we feel about this list. It's what we do despite how we feel that is going to be your advantage in today's market. So those two key components around mindset, if you can understand that, if you can get that, now we're looking at this list as it's our duty and it's our job to go out and connect with realtors. I told you this, I think you and Craig sewing on a call three years ago. My goal with technology and with video is not to do business with every realtor in the greater Seattle area. It's that every real estate agent at least knows who I am or has heard of me. Okay. And so when you have that purpose, when you have that goal of going out and going, I'm going to add value to these real estate agents. This is my job. I have value to add. This is my job today for three hours. I'm going to prospect for three hours a day. And there was a couple of people that commented on the post that I made. If you commit to prospecting, so I, we call it in our industry power hour. So from 10 to one every single day, if you prospect, if you made outbound sales calls to real estate agents, builders, financial planners, past clients, if you prospected for three days, you would not have a pipeline problem. Okay. Now, the problem that we're having right now is an inventory problem. I need more homes to be sold. Got a great pipeline now. We're building that up. I've got great real estate agents sending us deals now. Now we're just building that up. And at some point, we're going to come to the spring market and there's going to be more inventory. So these are some things that you have to understand. The seeds that we plant today are going to, they're going to blossom in the next few months, but we got to plant the seeds. So mindset, going back to mindset, we have to plant seeds every single day. If we don't, we're not working. If we don't work, we're going to starve. You good, Dave, so far? So, so no, we, we are beyond good guys. So give a big heart if you already love what you've heard. I mean, I, I really loved the way you framed. It doesn't matter how you feel. It, it matters the actions you take. You know, do you make the calls is going to define the success you have in this market. And guys, this is a market share market. Uh, you know, I, I'm here at the Momentum Builder event. I had dinner with Cindy Ertman yesterday. And, and you can just see how fired up she was. She's like, you know what? These are always the markets over the course of my 30 plus year career where we killed it, you know, because it was hard because we got a plan and we took action and, and, and our peers didn't. Like this is where market share is gained. So I think, you know, that right there is priceless for the mortgage coach innovation team. We're always trying to create great micro content. Like, I think if we just got like a little 90 second version of Dan, just talking about your emotions don't matter, your actions matter. Um, showing up is like 80% of the game. Uh, so, so I just want to make sure that really resonated with folks. We got enough hearts. I know that it did. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to think like, how can we help you guys execute even more on that? So, so now guys, we're going to talk about tactics, how to do it, what to do it. Um, but if you just show up and do it, guys, you'll you'll fine tune your tactics. You'll get there. So so no, you're you're killing it, bro. And then remember, guys, this is a mastermind. If you have questions, if you have comments, put them in there. Uh, Matt uh, Robert Shaw just said, "How many powers are you doing a week? Is it every day?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have theme days. I have theme days. Mondays and Fridays we call realtors. Okay. I also on Fridays are my technology days, my video days, my podcast days, Tuesdays, we do updates. Okay. So when I'm off today's call, I'll be doing status updates. I call the listing agent, the buyer's agent, the borrower. Okay. And we have great calls. These are not rushed. It's having a conversation with the listing agent. I will have four minimum of four conversations with the listing agent through a transaction. And that tees up 
the wow, wow, I appreciate your communication. Wow, this went seamless. Wow, I love how you handled the appraisal issue. Awesome, Lisa. Well, that's what we do. My job is to get you guys to the finish line and get you paid and make sure that everyone's happy. Um, and then I go right into, hey, Lisa, up front, I asked you if we do a great job, are you opposed? This is a key word I'm going to talk about in a minute. Choosing the words that you use carefully. Are you opposed? It's really hard to say, yes, I'm opposed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, are you opposed you to sitting down? Opposed. What's that? But if they say yes, then like, hey, good luck out there, man. We're not. Well, a if they say yes, I, then we get to ask. But I have not had an agent say I yes, guess. they're opposed. So when you use that terminology, it almost I know Renee Rodriguez has talked about this before. I think when setting appointments, don't give them options or eliminate two options or something how he taught it. So you're getting them to pick. And I think it's really are you opposed to sitting down with us for 10 or 15 minutes? So I can show you a couple of things on top of the experience that you just had with us that can help you sell more homes. I know you do a lot of listings. I have a cash buyer program right now that's helping my listing agents sell more homes. And so when you use an RU opposed, we'll come back to that in a second. So Tuesday, I do updates. Wednesday, we call pre-approvals. Okay, and then Thursdays, I'm struggling on right now, but that's my, our favorite past clients. Normally, I'll do birthday calls on Thursdays. But guys, the point is there's a theme for each power hour. And we follow that. And that's how we stay on task relative to prospecting. That's how we're not losing pre-approvals out in the marketplace to builders and other people's because we're constantly staying in touch with them. And we need to love on our leads right now. So yes, I'm doing power every single day, but Mondays and Fridays are realtor and well days. Okay. So, and for anyone, guys, this is one being recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel within a few hours where it is shareable. And, you know, I've created this content to help managers provide leadership to their loan officers and to help loan officers get to it. You know, uh, Jeremy did an interview, uh, his Realtor Playbook. It was the first Tuesday of this week. Check that out. Uh, I thought that was one of the best interviews of the year so far. Uh, Bill M. Jones. Guys, it's a most must-watch interview. It's the first time I've interviewed this guy. Uh, it is a must watch conversation. By the way, Dan, did you get a chance to watch that interview I did with Phil? Yeah, Phil crushed it. Phil's, uh, I got to see the Tom Ferry one as well when he was on Tom Ferry's podcast. That's how I, that's how I heard of Phil and I ended up buying a case of his little books, you know, exactly what to say. So good exactly, stuff. a book, exactly what to say. So that term Dan said, Hey, are you open to being intentional with your words? Uh, yeah. Guys, this book is gold, and there is a realtor version of this book, so that's that's tailored for real estate agents. Have you checked that one out too, or is this the one you? you go no, with? it's the one I've given to a lot of real estate agents, and they love it. One, it's this thin, and the words are this big, so it's a really, really easy read, and it and it's literally something you can go, you can go to that. Yeah, here, Matt. Matt asked for the book again. Here's the book. This is written by Phil Jones. It's really small, like. Literally six inches. Look at that. Probably six inches by a little over a quarter of an inch. But it like that. See, just it, there's the script. There's the there. It, well, there's the objection. We're going to talk about it in a minute. All an objection is is a question. So how do you answer the questions? Most of us fight back. Most of us get defensive with the question. Phil does a great job. He's uh, he's brilliant, by the way. And, and and guys, my interview with him. It's the number two link at savageinsights.com. So if you go to savageinsights.com, I'm actually going to move it up one. I'm going to move it up to the very top because I would say of all the interviews that I've done so far this year, this, this is the most important piece of content. Also, if you want to get updates, you know, I am um, every week I'm picking what are the three most important interviews that I do. And I have a text club. So if you text 949-799-0837, it's right here. Uh, you'll you'll get what I think are the three most important interviews of the week and the micro content that I create. And I can tell you right now, this interview with Dan is going to be the most important interview you can watch this week. It'll be there. So go to savageinsights.com, check it out. All right, let's keep going, bro. Let's get tactical. We, we finished Q1. So we got to Super Bowl this week. So guys, think of this. It's going to have, we finished quarter one. We're in the first. Let's let's get tactical. Here we go. Dan, did we okay. lose you? <clears throat> no, we're here. You got me. Okay, I got you. I, I I got you. So yeah, let's get tactical and let's start talking. I want to I want to give you the formula, and then we're going to get into some role playing and some scripts. So Dave, get ready to be a realtor. 
Okay. <laughs> um, but here's what we're going to, I want to give you the formula. The formula is first off, you want to write this down. Real quick. I am, I'm out of a, I'm out of a hotel. Yeah. You're a little bit spotty. It's okay. I, I, I've been around mortgage coach before I can run with this. All good. All right. So I want you to write this down. We have to go into these calls, objection hunting, objection hunting. Okay. We have to go into these calls, objection hunting. Number two, you have to understand that an objection up front is just a question. An objection up front is just a question. Dan, I already have a realtor. Dan, I appreciate your call. I'm already working with a realtor. The realtor is a good friend of mine. I've been working with that realtor for years. Hey, Dan, I appreciate the phone call. Please don't call me again. I'm just too busy. I don't need a lender. Um, uh, what's the other objection? I'm, I'm really only getting too busy and I already have another lender. Can you call me back a different time? Okay. Um, I think someone mentioned the other day that they are getting, hey, this sounds great. A lot of loan officers are calling me right now. Will you buy leads? Will you pay for leads? So if I got that up front, I would love that. That's an easy one to, to, to knock out of the park. That's like an 82 mile an hour fastball instead of 96. So the, the idea is we're objection hunting. Objections are just questions. And how we respond to those questions makes a world of difference. Most loan officers either don't respond or they'll be too easy just to get off the phone call because they look at this as a boulder blocking the interstate, the highway. And all it is, is it's a stone that we just have to swerve around. So the other thing, the third thing I want you to write down is you don't have to answer the question. You don't have to answer the question. Dan, will you pay for my marketing? Dan, will you buy leads? Hey, that's a really great question. Yes, I participate in supporting my realtors and then swerve and then go right back to what your question was, where you asked them, you asked them up front, if we could sit down, we're going to go over the script in a second. So understanding that we're objection hunting, objections are just questions, and how we respond to those questions with the right tonality, with maybe pausing, with agreeing. So write down this fourth thing, you all, fourth thing, you want to repeat and affirm, or you want to repeat and interpret. Okay, so if you read Phil's book, if you read any really great book on sales, like making sales calls, you talk to people, they talk a lot about repeating. So what I heard you say is, okay, that's 1990s, 2000s. If someone says that to me, I already know their dialogue, they're in a call center. So we don't, that's not what I'm talking about, what I heard you say. How can you say what I heard you say without saying what I heard you say? So Dan, I'm already working with a lender. Thanks for your call. I'm already working with a lender. I'm really good. So what you say next matters most. So what I learned and what I say is I understand that, Laura, and that's the exact reason why I'm calling you today. If you didn't already work with a lender, that means you wouldn't need a professional like myself. And I respect the fact that you're working with a lender. But if I could show you a way, so look how I just swerved right around that. If I repeated and affirmed without saying what I heard you say is, I repeated and affirmed and then swerved right around it. Laura, if I could show you a way to close an extra three to five transactions in the next six to 12 months while keeping your existing lender relationship in place, then isn't that the reason why you got into the real estate business to begin with, to generate more referrals? Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to write down the fifth thing, be unobjectable, get the objection, we're going to hunt for it, we're going to respond to it, how we respond, we're going to swerve around that stone, how we respond to it, be unobjectable. Now, if they object to that, it's now not an objection, they're just questions, it's confirmed that they're just questions. Yeah, that sounds really good, Dan, but you lenders are sweet talkers. I've heard this before. Okay, I'm going to go back to repeat. Laura, I understand that. And the sad part about our industry is we have about 90% of our industry will say things, they'll write checks that they can't cash. I'm different. The way that I'm different, Laura, is I want to sit down with you. And I want to show you exactly how I just helped a brand new agent get two referrals from the one loan program that I want to share with you. 
at how they put an extra $60,000 in commissions in their bank account by leveraging a 20 minute meeting with me. Okay, so now we're gonna write down number six, testimonial. Number six, a testimonial. Hard to argue when you're giving these testimonials, it's hard to object to those. So be unobjectable. And if they do throw out another question like that, it's just a question. They're challenging us. Yes, I've heard that before from you guys. You guys always say these things. You got this slick program that's going to help me generate leads, blah, blah, blah. And then I never get anything from it. <clears throat> guys, this is what I'm hearing. So how you just swerve right around that tiny little boulder and keep going, you use a testimonial. Now, here's the close. After you get done using that testimony, we'll bring it all together with Dave here in a second. So let's do this, Laura. I've got time this Thursday at 10 a.m. For about 15 minutes, I want to sit down. I want to show you this loan program that I'm talking about more so. I want to show you exactly how I'm going to help you bring three to five additional referrals to your business in the next six to 12 months. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to help you with this process. I'm going to call you every single week. We're going to work together on this. Now, do you have time on Tuesday? Or excuse me, do you have time at 10 o'clock or would two o'clock work better for you? So now up front, I told her Thursday at 10. The close, the reaffirming close is now I've given her 10 or two. You're unobjectable. Now, I have gotten objections that late in the game. And the very last thing I'm going to do if I get one, well, you know, let me think about this. Or can you email that over to me? Now I'm going to monetize it. Laura, before this phone call, because I knew this call was going to be very important if I were to get a hold of you, I just pulled up your numbers and it looks like your average commission per transaction is $30,000. If my math is correct, and if I do what I say I'm going to do, that's north of $125,000 in additional commissions that I'm going to help bring to you. It's just too important for me to email over. So does Thursday at 10 or does Thursday at 2 work better for you? for 15 minutes to go over exactly how I just helped that agent in your marketplace do exactly what I'm talking about. Be unobjectable. You can't object to finding $150,000 in your bank account as a result to sitting down with a new lender for 15 or 20 minutes. Does that make sense? So, so guys, make note, he leveraged data. Be able to have a specific conversation with an agent, letting them know you know what their production is. There is no reason for you to be hiding that information you know about an agent and and, and drilling down on that. So that is what a data-driven mortgage professional is. You know, right now, one of the biggest pain points for realtors is, and, and by the way, most realtors don't even know how big of a pain point it is. They don't realize that 63% of all mortgages in America start with two or 3%. Most realtors don't know that. That is data that you have. I talk about it from stage every time I'm on a stage right now. It's it's a big part of the article that Dan and I wrote to kick off the new year, the six mega trends of $100 million producers. But that's a piece of data. Be the one that brings that to realtors and make sure that you're letting realtors know that you know their production and make sure that you know that you're a partner. You're there to improve those numbers uh, by using data and delivering advice. So anyways, I'm loving this, Dan. We are at halftime, brother. So we are right at 30 minutes, just so you know, to keep on pace. Well, I don't need another, yeah, I don't need another 30 minutes. I think, guys, what I wanted to give you is tactical scripts. I wanted to show you how this looks. So in a minute, Dave and I are just going to role play a call. And, but I want to want, I wanted to give you one more thing to write down. And it's really important to understand this. You heard me say, after I said, if I could bring you, if I could show you a way to bring you an extra three to five transactions, closings, referrals in the next six to 12 months, then isn't that the reason why you got into real estate to begin with? Again, it's, we know the answer, you guys. What do realtors put on the back of their business cards? I, nothing means more than a referral. I heart referrals, right? So use their magic words. They're going to say yes to that. We want yeses. We want affirmations, right? So the reason why I say that and get their agreement is now we have their motivation. So it's really hard to make a sales call to a realtor thinking that that realtor needs me as a lender. They're not out searching. Most realtors are not out searching for new lenders every single day or they'll ask a colleague 
Who do you use as your lender? Are they good? Could, could you introduce me to them? That's not the case most of the time. The reason why we're making sales calls is to get to their motivation to show them that we can help solve a problem for them. They're having the same problems we are, guys, and it's leads. They, all realtors, even the top producers, want to close more business, right? So if I could show you a way, and we go right into that be unobjectable, but you have to write that down. I want you to write this down. When there's motivation, identify it. We got to get to motivation. When there's motivation, it's game over. Their motivation is to sell more homes, to get more referrals, get to that motivation, show them that, identify it, show them that we have a, we have a solution in place. A lot of them are going to say, well, how do you do this? Is it from one loan program? And here's the close. This is how you answer that. Yeah, well, that sounds good, Dan, but how do you do this? Laura, that's exactly why I want to sit down with you and I want to go over that. It's one of the first things we're going to go over is exactly how I'm going to generate this business with you. So remember earlier I said you don't have to, you're not going to sell someone and close them and change their minds on the phone. They already have a lender. Cool. Let's not fight them on that. Have you ever talked with someone that believes differently than you do about politics? Have you ever won them over in a conversation? Ever. That's why I don't like talking about politics in general. There's an, it's a, it's a no win situation. If you try to talk to a realtor on the phone about switching gears or a second opinion, I was always taught, well, I'd love to be your backup. Forget that. I want to help make you rich. I don't want to be your backup. And I'm out of wait in line and I got to wait for that lender to screw up and I got to call him every single Monday. Forget this. I'm going straight to the appointment. Laura, if I could show you a way, and those are key words, if I could show you a way, Laura, that's exactly what we're going to talk about when we get together on Thursday at 10 o'clock or would two o'clock work better. So choosing the right words that you use to anchor down that meeting, to anchor down your value is so, so, so important. Last thing that is really important, I want you to make sure that you heard me say this, I'm giving them options on the appointment. So I have time on Thursday at 10 to sit down and go over these strategies. And I get all the way to the end of that. And then here's the anchor. So does 10 o'clock on Thursday or would two o'clock work better for you? Okay, there's no way out. It's 10 or two, okay? And so I found that that's working a lot better than just, well, Dan, I, yeah, 10 o'clock, I have an office meeting. Cool. I have not had a realtor say that 10 and two don't work. I've had them say, well, two actually works better. I'll go with two, okay? So I think that's important. So we're looking for an objection. Objections are questions, okay? We're swerving around. We're not gonna get caught. So many lenders get caught on that objection. They get stuck on, I already have a lender. I don't have time. Don't argue with them. Don't get stuck on that. Swerve right around it. That's exactly why I'm calling, Laura. Really? Because I have a lender? You're just, it's an easier, this is called reducing sales resistance. It's the one thing that I've learned in studying this. As we talk, we have to reduce sales resistance instead of raise it. The second it starts to raise, you're going to get hung up on, or they're going to get off the phone faster than you can even object or even sneak something in. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, what I'd love to do, I want to share a couple of tips now, and then I want to bring it all together and role play with Dave. Is that fair? You good, Dave? You ready to role play? I think Dave froze up. Dave froze up. All right. So here's a couple of advanced tips. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. <clears throat> we have to get rid of taking, we have to take out dead words. We have to take out debate words. Okay. So I hear so many lenders talk and say, however, they kind of get into an argument or a back and forth volley with the realtor. And they'll say words like transition words, like however, like, but, or they'll say, like I said earlier, these are debate words. These are condescending words. Don't use those. Um, as I said earlier. Um, and then the other key is never fully answer a question on the phone. If they ask you a question and it's valid, like, I, Dan, I don't understand how you can do this. Your response is, that's the response, Laura, that I get from a lot of real estate agents that I talk to. In fact, that's going to be the first thing that we discuss when we get together on Thursday at 10 o'clock or would two o'clock work better? 
Okay, so don't get caught up on questions. So these are some advanced tips. Take out dead words, debate words, and understand how to swerve and not get stuck on that boulder. Um, the last thing, two more keys. If you're right, if you're taking notes, write this down. De you decrease sales resistance by asking better questions. And you decrease sales resistance by repeating and affirming, but not directly repeating, like we said earlier, okay? Repeat and affirm, re repeat and interpret, okay? Number two, as the call lengthens, as the call lengthens, everything you say becomes more unobjectable. So you saw after that first objection or question, I already have a lender, I'm too busy. Yeah, I'll meet it with you if you pay for my leads, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. That's just a question up front. As you get additional objections or questions down the road, that's where you have to be very strong in your words and be unobjectable in what you say. And I'm going to show you that with Dave here in a second. And then this is the key, you guys. When you're making sales calls, you have to listen. Once you get past that first, Dan, I already have a lender, and the conversation starts to ex extend and you're asking them questions, listen, they're going to tell you their problems. They're not going to tell you their problems like a counselor, like going to see a counselor. Necessarily, you're just going to open up up front. But as someone talks to you, they're going to come out and say that they're having these issues or their lender does this that they wish they did differently or their lender does this great or certain things. So you got to make sure that we're listening on these calls, not just trying to close for the appointment. And the last thing is you're never going to sell a realtor on the phone. You're never going to win a political debate face to face or on the phone, right? So. Don't think you're going to sell them. The goal is to get together for 15 to 20 minutes to show them the three to five ways that we're going to help them or the ways that we're going to help them bring about three to five extra closings in the next six to 12 months. Okay. So Dave, are you back? I think you froze up for a couple of minutes. I did. I think I got a hotel internet, but let's give it a whirl. Okay. Let's do a little role play. And I'm going to, I might stop. I might pause. And if there's ways where I can, you know, like a teaching moment through this. Um, but let's go ahead and, uh, and give us a, sh a shot. So Dave's a realtor. Um, I don't know what Dave's going to say. We haven't practiced this. Um, we're going to give this one a shot. All right. Ring, ring. What's up? Hey, Dave, this is Dan Keller over at New American Funding. Hey, um, I'm calling you today for, I know you're probably really busy, Dave, but I'm calling you today to see if I could get together with you later this week. Uh, to share with you two new loan programs that I'm confident you're not seeing in the marketplace and they'll sell, they'll help you sell additional homes this coming year in a tough market. Dan, I'm really busy right now and I've got a really good lending relationship already, but I really appreciate the call. Yeah, I understand that. Um, Dave, I got a question for you real quick before, before we wrap. Um, is the current lender that you're working with right now, do they have an all cash program that's helping you kind of bridge a transaction between a seller needing to sell their home, needing to buy a home and having to sell their home? Um, I'm not sure. That's the, that's, that's the intent here today. I want to sit down with you and I want to go over this program. Dave, in the last 60 days, I've helped two, two different real estate agents double end transactions as a result of this program, which put an extra 60 to $70,000 in commissions in their pocket. And they had no idea this loan program existed. And to, the, to my best knowledge, there's not a lot of lenders out there that are offering this loan program. So I've got some time this, this Thursday, just 10 or 15 minutes. I wanted to drop by a flyer, introduce myself and see if this program may be of value to you. Well, I'm, I'm not going to be difficult. So I'll just say yes. But don't, 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 don't fold. Well, don't I, fold I think, over. Okay. So hey, I'm really busy. This is just not a good week for me. Okay. Tell me, Dave, most, most realtors tell me to email it over. Ask me to email it over. Just say, Hey, I'm really busy. Would you just email it over to me? Hey, hey, interesting. Would you email that over to me? Yeah, Dave, I'm actually going to do one better than that. I planned on sending you a real quick, a real quick text that has a video of the program with the testimonial from that realtor that I was just talking about. But Dave, before this call, I pulled up your numbers and I'm really impressed. It looks like your average commission per transaction is $30,000. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, first off, congratulations. That's a great market that you're in. The math, if my math is correct, Dave, it looks like based off of this program and the ability for me to help you, if I could help bring an extra three to five closings from referrals to you this year, in the next six to 12 months, that looks like it's approximately 
120 to 150 thousand dollars in additional commissions. In my opinion, Dave, I think that's a little too important just to send over via email. Would you agree with me? What do they usually say there? Like, I mean, I'm good. To, I'm. I want to beat you, so I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. they agree. They typically agree. So, so Dave, I've got time on Thursday at 10 o'clock. What I'd love to do is I'd love to sit down with you. I'd love to go over these loan programs with you. And one additional strategy that my real estate agents are using to generate referrals from their past clients and on social media with the use of these loan programs. So does 10 o'clock work good for you or would two o'clock work better this Thursday? Yeah, this Thursday. Let's go. What time? 10 or two? Two. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that was easy. Dave kind of folded what about, really. What about really... If, if that program? Is there another close other than that program? Because, you know, not everybody's going to want to do that. Not everybody's going to say yes to that. So here's the thing. The program is I'm going to spend one to two minutes on the program. The reality of it is I want to sit down with them to show them my six by 12 program that I put in my private Facebook group. It's It includes an all about you form. So by the way, a, a 24 hours before I meet with that realtor, I send them, this could be a totally separate call, Dave. I send them an all about you form where I ask them to fill this out prior to our meeting. Okay. I'm going to show them the all about you form strategy. I'm going to show them my six by 12 communications uh, uh, strategy or program. 90% of realtors do not follow up. So I'll ask them that one question when we sit down, Dave, do me a favor. Let's say I refer you a client and you close them. In fact, they're closing today on a transaction. Run me through how your post-closing concierge program looks. And they're going to say, what do you mean? I'm going to say, what do you do on closing day when you hand them the keys? Do you bring them a gift? Tell me how that looks. Okay. And then they'll tell me, yeah, I bring them a bottle of wine or this or that. And I go, cool. How do you know which kind of wine do they like? Right. Well, I, I, I don't, I mean, we, I just give them champagne and a couple of wine glasses. Cool. What if they're uh, recovering alcoholics, right? I mean, so go, then I go back to the all about you form. It, we get to know more about our customer. So we get to customize the gifting. We get to enhance the relationships. So I talked to him about that. And I talked to him about the weekly calls, the texts, the emails, the letters from the heart, the evidence of success cards that we send them, how we stay in communication with our clients. If you do this once a month with your clients, do you agree, Dave? You'll probably get more referrals from them. Yeah, if they see you on video once a month, do you think they might share it if it's valuable or it might be you might be top of mind when they're at a party? So that's the whole purpose of the meeting. That's how I'm going to help them generate an extra three to five referrals in the next six to 12 months is because most realtors, we know this, and lenders don't manage their database properly. This is where we can go all the way and have a sales boomerang conversation. We can have how we manage our database conversation. I always throw in the Todd Duncan cost of a lost lead conversation. How many leads did you generate? Like how many closings did you have last year? How many leads did you have to generate to get those closings? How many of them you think went somewhere else or because your lack of follow-up didn't use you? Blah, blah, blah. We run the numbers and I show them how much money they left on the table. They leave these meetings, you guys, going, holy shit. I am leaving a lot of money on the table. My lender's not doing this. He's not this put together. He isn't showing me how to do this. Oh, by the way, we have an all cash program. We have a jumbo two one buy down program. We all have loan programs we can sell. Okay. So I'm using that. If I opened up the call to Dave going, Hey, Dave, this is Dan over at New American Funding. Hey, I want to get together with you to show you how to close an extra three to five transactions this coming year by X, Y, and Z. You know, that leaves a lot to be like, well, are you a marketer? What are you? Yeah, I'm a mortgage guy. Hey, Dave, I want to get together with you this Thursday. I've got two loan programs that are going to help you close more transactions this year. You need to know about them. Most loan, loan lenders out there don't have them to the best of my knowledge. And I'm looking for 10 to 15 minutes just to connect to get this information in front of you. So I've got time on, on Thursday at 10 to pop by your office to show you this information. Would that work with your schedule? And I'm hoping that they don't fold like Dave did and they say, Dan, I appreciate your call, but I've got a lender. They're calling our bluff. Some of them will say, yeah, most of them don't. Like, like nine out of 10 don't. Dan, I already have a lender. That's great. Can you just send over that information? That's fine. And that's when I monetize the call. I got to go in. They're trying to get me off the phone and you've got to be unobjectable. Dave, I put some time in before I made this call today. And it looks like your average commission per sale is about $30,000. Am I correct? I get their buy-in. Cool. Dave, this information is way too valuable for me to email. I will send that over to you. 
But if I just email this to you, you don't take action and we don't meet, I believe in my professional opinion, you're going to be leaving about $150,000 of commissions on the table. Now that's too important for me to look away from. And it's too valuable since I want to help my realtors make more money. So do you have 15 minutes on Thursday at 10 or would two o'clock work better for me to pop by your office? So, so guys, you know, the, the magic of the sales strategy is, is first of all, he's showing up, he's doing it, whether he feels like it or not. Uh, he's, he is coming in with a, with a, you know, focused on how he's going to help him make more money. He's leveraging data. So he's having conversations that's focused on solving problems and helping them make more money. And, and there is so many different scripts and tactics that you could lead with, you know, Hey, let me show you how I can, you know, literally generate a bunch of referrals from your database tomorrow. Let me show you how I can create urgency with first time home buyers and, and help you crush it with first time. I mean, guys, there's all kinds of different um, tactics and ways that you can solve problems and get a meeting, but you got to show up, you got to make calls. One challenge I would throw out there to the mortgage coach community and Dan, you, you know, you're always pretty active in our Facebook group, but would you this week, um, you know, one, maybe you, you, we, we, we start a post that shares kind of like, hey, the Dan Keller full call realtor script for this week, and we post that out. I'll, I'll write it up. Me and my team will, will help it, but you or I will post it. And then, and then guys, we'll have a, we'll have a challenge in our group, uh, what's working. And we'll just have like a, a big post that's kicking off this little challenge and idea. And then we'll track it for the week. And we'll just do it this week. You know, like literally you've got to take action today. You got to take action tomorrow. Would you be willing to just pay a little closer attention to our group this week? Yeah, I, I think we should have an appointment tracker. I think it'd be a great contest to have. Like, hey, pick pick 20, 20 agents um, or more. I don't care. Pick 20 agents and practice this dialogue. It's real simple. Dave hit it right on the head. What you say up front, I don't think it really matters because you're probably going to get an objection. They don't know you. They don't know you. So you could say, hey, I've got, hey, this is Dan over at New American Funding. I've got a program that, that is helping generate buyer referrals in the local marketplace. I'd love to sit down with you for 10 or 15 minutes and share this with you. Dan, I appreciate that, but I've got a lender. Dan, I, you know, just email me some stuff. It doesn't really matter what you say. You're saying the initial dialogue is to get the objection. And then how you handle that and how you swerve around it is super important. But yeah, I think we should do an appointment tracker. I think that'd be great. Okay, guys, so we'll, we'll get the chat going around that. So before we run out of time, you know, one, I feel like we've answered these questions. I, I see, um, yeah, because I think, you know, unless I'm missing it, Bill's question around what do you say when they're, you know, they're resisting scheduling. I feel like Dan has addressed that. If yeah. he hasn't, you know, ask another question explicitly and I'll get it from him. Dan, um, did you notice that Facebook um, post earlier this week? or I think it was this week, it might've been late last week, where some, it was, you know, I don't know if it was a new loan officer, but they were new to mortgage coach. And and they were asking our community the question on when to give the TCA. And they they knew they had a better deal. And it was like, hey, I think, I think they had already forwarded the TCA to the buyer. Um, and then there was some chat with, hey, I only give the TCA when I'm on the phone with the buyer or, you know, there, there was just a number of different ways. How, how do you handle that question? Did, did you see that question in the group? I saw the question, but it was like, do I send the TCA out early or when? Yeah, I send yeah, right. the TCA out right away. Right away. And so you, right you away. Know, yeah. with a video. And you guys, what we're talking about today, handling objections or questions, guys, it, you do this with, I did this last week and won a, a rate shopper over. That's the, the question on rate is not an objection. It's just a question. Yeah, I think your rate is high. We've heard Josh Metal and a bunch of guys. So what do you, I'm curious, Dave, what do you mean by, um, how do you mean my rate is high? Let me know a little bit more about that. Um, because there are some options out there. Well, I saw on the internet. Okay. okay. Um, well, the internet's typically about 24 to 48 hours behind actual rate quotes. Um, but let's talk about this. So it's how you respond and your tonality is so important. You can use this stuff with objections, with rate objections, with realtor objections, with borrower objections. But I send my TCA out right away. In your particular case, I would make a video with it 
And I would just explain why you're sending it out, your value proposition, why you should work, why, why we need to work together. And always say this. I always say this when the rate objection comes up. It's the big elephant in the room right now. Everyone's focused on rates because they're higher than they've ever been. But here's the thing. If you're focusing on rates, you're going to trip over the big picture, and that's the overall value. In less than one year, I'm going to be refinancing you out of this loan. And when we do that, there are going to be no costs associated with that. Most other lenders are going to charge you loan fees and, and additional costs to do this. And so by saving you that $2,500, by not having to refinance you, that's a part of the total savings. So what I'd like to do is sit down and kind of go over all of this with you because it's more than just interest rate right now that you should be focused on. So I would make sure that you're sending a video so you can sit down and you can explain other value. Rate is just one thing. I think that particular person that posted that, talk about your ongoing mortgage planning uh, concierge program and how you're going to take great care of them and all the other things that you do to help them pay less interest over time and get the, the most value out of the mortgage by working with you. But I definitely would throw a video on that. All right. So <laughs> anything, any questions come in? Uh, I don't see any new questions. We've yeah, got I think Matt had one, Dave. What if they cancel the morning of, or you call them to confirm the morning of, and they're and they're giving? I think I, I saw that last question. Um, that has happened, and and then obviously if they're sick, it's one thing. But if something came up, close them for the following meeting. Like, hey, hey, I I, I have a I have an opening today at, at two o'clock as well. Uh, again, like I said on the call, Dave. I believe per your average loan commission or uh, transaction commit commission Mortgage per transaction me, gives me a professional that that I think this is too important to skip over. So I've got time today at two o'clock. It's 15 to 20 minutes to pop by, introduce myself and give you this information. And I promise you, Dave, this will not be a waste of your time. OK, so I would just just swerve right around it. Don't get stuck on it. Okay, how does your schedule look next week? No, swerve right around it, anchor them down for that day. And, and guys, have fun with this. You know, um, one of the most important books I read every single year is The Four Agreements. Uh, and one of the four agreements is don't take it personally. If they no show you, don't take it personally. If mm -hmm. they cancel the same day, don't take it personally. Uh, you know, so, you know, first of all, don't take those things personally. Uh, I can't remember how many years ago I, I interviewed Jeremy and, you know, he, he had a lot of coffee shop meetings and probably still does have a lot of coffee shop meetings. And when someone, and, and he would get no show, mm -hmm. you know, let's just say 20% of the time. And he would write their name on it. You'd order yeah. a cup of coffee. He'd write their name on it yeah. and he would take a picture of it and, and send it to him. So, you know, Guilt marketing, I think we called it at the time. And he'd close uh, so, them. He'd close them hundred percent after that too, after texting those. I remember they would that. Feel bad. They'd feel yep. bad. Like, oh man. Yeah. So so you know, here here's the deal, guys. We gotta we gotta be hungry. Uh we gotta be the buffalo. I there was a picture that I saw over the weekend that when I saw it, I just thought, like, wow, that's resilience, that's strength, that's courage, that's boldness. Uh, we need to be buffaloes, we need to run towards the storm. We, we need to have thick skin in this market. When people know show us, they reschedule on us, don't take it personally. Um, but you know what? If you are not skilled, you are not a data-driven mortgage advisor, you know, you don't <laughs> giving data to your consumers with the total cost analysis. You aren't using tools like MMI. You, you know, yeah. you, you aren't using your CRM and you're not really a value to a realtor, like other than a loan program. And you can do a good pre-qual and close on time. Like that is not enough going forward. We are in a new era in the industry uh, because 63% of every mortgage starts with two or three and, and rates are probably never going to two again. Uh, and if they do, we have a much bigger problem going on in America. Like it's not, it's not a good time for America. Probably not a good time for us if rates do make it to two again. Although I don't know, in the mortgage business, we tend to thrive when those things happen. But but we got a plan that rates are gonna, you know, fluctuate between the fours and the sevens. You need to plan your business as a mortgage professional that that you leverage data, be at the right place at the right time. If you don't have a sales boomerang powered CRM, uh, let your manager know that you need one. 
uh, we got Spencer. Um, Spencer is a, a strategist here. Spencer, anything you want to share to folks before we run out of time, just to help them get as much value from Mortgage Coach and Boomerang as possible? Absolutely. I had this flyer put together. Thank you for having me on, Dave. But I uh, had this flyer put together I wanted to go over really quickly and just given some simple steps and the mindset of what it takes to become that preferred lender and how you can dive into that relationship a little bit, specifically with Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach in mind here. So I just wanted to go over this flyer, guys. I, I created the phrase here. Hey, it's as easy as one, two, three. Uh, as you can see, the realtors that are succeeding are data driven. They are tech savvy. They are interested in new forms of technology. So to be able to approach them in the one, two, three manner to say, hey, I have an interesting opportunity that I don't want you to miss out on. I've heard excellent things and wanted to get up to date with that so that you can number two, get to the point through many of the mechanisms and talk points that Dan so eloquently put, get to the point where, hey, you're able to exchange or refer that up-to-date leads list at least quarterly, and then in turn, grow your business, guys. Um, the idea here is using these tools to become the captain of a borrower's financial team and able to dish out these referrals, point them in the right direction, give all kinds of different advice there. So kind of a simple flyer here that just goes over the way that we want to harness this technology and these tools that we have in our tool belt, so to speak, to make sure that we're optimizing the experience for our realtor friends, for all of our referral partners, and to make sure that borrowers are understanding the power that we have in the end as well. So, um, you know, you can't, uh, one of the great quotes we've heard in the last couple of sessions here, Dave, I think is that you can't tell somebody, I'm going to be your trusted advisor. You have to prove that. You have to earn that responsibility. And by diving into these conversations with realtors, by making sure that borrowers at times are aware that, hey, I'm looking for the long-term strategy. I'm looking to help you become a homeowner not a loan owner, letting them in on the dirty little secret, letting your realtors in on the dirty little secret. Guys, that's how we get ahead of the volatility of the mortgage industry of, oh, it's a, it's a refi environment or it's a purchase environment or here's what other lenders are doing. When we're able to have this awareness of what's in our database and how we're monitoring it or how we're able to respond and help realtors using you know a mortgage coach flyer to put out at a open house going over an FHA versus a conventional, something basic to just help them dive a little deeper. That's how we become the captain of our borrowers' financial teams and, and make sure that we're winning the way that we should be in 2023 to help you know control or own our agent's paychecks, guys. This is how we bring them the value. If you're bringing an agent five deals a month, five potential referrals a month, that is a complete paradigm shift for what from what the mortgage industry has been as long as it's existed, right? So uh, really trying to make that drive, that push right now, today, February, before the market changes, when you have a little bit more downtime than you typically do to make sure that you can enhance that experience. So I just wanted to go into that a little bit. We've got some resources I'm going to share in the chat as well, but I uh, just wanted to emphasize how great this conversation was. And Dan, all the awesome touch points you hit on of ways to navigate through those conversations to make sure that you can't really get told no in certain situations and make sure that you're continuing to push on through. It was super impressive. So with that in mind, I'll, uh, I'll pass it back to you guys to finish up here. Thank you, Spencer. And if you could stop sharing the screen, guys, we will put that flyer in the file section of our Facebook group. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link to it down below. Uh, Dan, before I let you go, um, we've got the, the um, uh, Modern Mortgage Summit coming up. Uh, actually, it's a month from now, you know, it's, it's almost exactly a month from now. Real quick, tell everybody what you're going to talk about at your keynote, guys, we're going to have 12 amazing mortgage professionals delivering TED Talk style presentations. Um, it's limited to 60 people being there in person, but no limit to the number of people that can buy the virtual ticket for $100. Um, there's a link at savageinsights.com if you want to sign up for it. Dan, what are you going to cover on stage um, on, I think it's the night, uh, yeah. March 9th? <laughs> That's why we did this call today. So it's a, a all cold call. We're going to go in and uh, I'm going to, we're going to role play. I'm going to role play, grab a couple of people in the audience or someone that wants to come up and we're going to role play and you're going to get 2X what you got today, but I'm going to simplify the formula, share the formula, and then I think what's most important has been a couple of people that have asked questions. So when you're sitting down with them for 15 to 20 minutes, what are you sharing? And I'm going to give you the overview of that. And then we're going to talk about different motivations. Realtors want leads. 
when we understand what our customers want, when we're making a cold call, it's really easy to solve for that. So a lot of what we talked about today, but compact because I only have 15 minutes on, on stage. All right, guys. So uh, hope to see a bunch of you there. If you got value from today's call, use the reaction. Give us a little heart for Dan. Dan Keller, if you got value, the hearts are flowing, brother. Uh, dude, you're such a gift to this community. I know you also, you know, have your own Facebook group. I don't know if you have anything that's available to other folks, but dude, you're a gift to the mortgage industry. Is there other ways that people can follow you or get value from you? Um, you know, what's the best way to do that? I think the best way is to go out and and make these scripts your own. Go out and implement go out and set realtor appointments, go out and make some money, change your life financially, and then do me a favor, message me and let me know that it's working. I've already, I've already had a couple of people message me, go, oh my God, I tried this and it worked from, I went live last Friday in my private Facebook group. It's called Minor League Mortgage Coach. Um, and I'm a big baseball guy. So minor leagues, we have the minor leagues to coach people to get them to the big leagues. And so it's free. Nothing's ever being sold there. So you can go over and like that. Follow me on Instagram, my mortgage guy, Dan and YouTube. Um, I'd appreciate the follow and the likes over there, but let me know when you're having success. I mean, we're in this together and it's make, like Dave said, let's have some fun with this and uh, enjoy what you're doing. We are blessed to be in an awesome industry. We have value to bring. So go share it with your community. All right, Dan Keller, you are the man, brother. So appreciate you. Everyone, I hope you got value from this one-hour session. Take action. Be engaged in our group. If you don't already follow the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, follow it today. And this is a wrap. Take care, everybody.